Welcome back to another episode of Plant Based Dads. I'm Joey. We are a vegan, mostly whole foods cooking channel. We do some product reviews, sometimes with episodes with Tim. If you like what you hear so far, please hit that like button, show us some love, and think about subscribing and becoming part of the Plant Based Dads family. If you like getting these videos, you can get them two days early if you become one of our financial supporters on Patreon or PayPal. Our patrons are our partners who help us put the show together and get the plant based message out to the public. If you've ever seen the show or if you're in the Facebook group and you've thought, how can I help? How can I be part of this? That's how you can help. You become a patron or you become a one-time member on PayPal. There's a link to both of those uh, below this video in the description. We could absolutely use your help and we'd love for you to be part of the team. All right, today is a glorious day because one, it's Friday. Two, it's a school holiday. So I'm off from work and Lex is off from school, um, which is always a nice little bonus. It's the middle of uh, April and uh, school is coming to an end very soon within, uh, I think it's 30 days from next Wednesday for my school and 30 days from next Friday for Lex's school. Uh, so we're both excited. And then we're on our way to Minnesota for my niece, Allie. Uh, it's her high school graduation. She just turned 18 and she's about to graduate from high school. And then after that, we're back for a week and then we're on our way to North Carolina uh, to my sister April's house to celebrate the graduation and 18th birthday of uh, my niece Madison, um, who we're really excited about. And it's Hope, her sister Hope's birthday while we're there uh, in June. So a lot going on. As soon as the school is over, bang, we're traveling. What I'm doing today is I'm going to do what I eat in a day. And I, you know, I haven't had buckwheat in a long time. And I really want some buckwheat today for, for breakfast. So I'm going to show you my, uh, my Instant Pot buckwheat recipe. I did a whole video on this. There's a link to it right here. And it was our very first video. So you, buckwheat is a lot like oats. You kind of do the same thing, except it's not wheat, it's a seed. So that whole wheat thing at the end of buckwheat kind of makes people think that, you know, if you're not gluten tolerant, you can't have buckwheat. Not the case at all. There is no wheat in buckwheat. So let's get started on this because I'm starving already. And I've got my Instant Pot right here. This is the six quart Instant Pot. I always get uh, comments on the end of my videos going, which Instant Pot are you using? I only have this one. I've had it for, I don't know, seven years or whatever. It's the only one I've ever owned. It's the six quart, the duo. Um, I would love to get a new one, but you know me, like I'm really cheap. There's nothing wrong with this, so I'm not buying a new one. Unless, of course, it's about wants to send me a brand new one to put on the show, and then I will gladly give this to someone else. All right, let's get started. First thing we need is a cup of buckwheat groats. So I uh, put my buckwheat groats in a, like a big cup, fill it with water, stir it up, and let it kind of, I don't know, just get all that, that stuff. Because I buy it in bulk, right? Just like out of a bin. So I don't know what's in that bin. So I kind of wash it first, all right? So that's what I'm doing first. I'm taking my buckwheat groats, and I have a cup of them, and I'm just dumping them right here into the Instant Pot. All right, buckwheat groats, done. Next I'm at, oh, and I don't know if you noticed this, but I got new glasses. They're progressive, so I don't have to change glasses anymore. So I can read the book and I can see the camera at the same time and see them in focus, so that's really nice. All right, next I'm putting in one and three quarter cups of filtered water, right? I'm just gonna, this is right out of the Berkey, so I'm just gonna dump that right in there. <laughs> Little spillage. Now I'm gonna add in two medjool dates. I absolutely love medjool dates. That's my sweetener right there, so let me dump these in here. So I'm not gonna add any maple syrup or anything like that. In the video, if you watch that, the one where I make this and that's all I do in that video, that one I do add maple syrup because Tim likes it, but Tim ain't here and I don't need it, so I'm not adding it. Next I'm adding one ripe banana. Uh, I'm gonna dump this in right here. All right, so those are my main ingredients. I'm just gonna get the cover and put it on the Instant Pot here. And then I'm gonna set the Instant Pot to high pressure for four minutes. I'm also gonna make sure my uh, vent is in the sealing position so it's sealed. And that's it. So I'm gonna give that time to come up to pressure. <clears throat> It'll cook for four minutes. Then I'm gonna open it up and then we'll pop in like the spices and the blueberries and all that. If I throw that in now, like the blueberries are just gonna get really mushy and, and I mean, they're frozen blueberries. They just need a little bit of heat after that's done and they'll be ready to eat. All right, let's let this do its thing. See you in a few minutes. All right, the Instant Pot just did its little 10 beeps. That means it's done with the cooking time. It is still under pressure. We're gonna do a quick release. You can see here that the pressure pin is up. It's level with the top of the surface. So that means that it is under pressure. Uh, whether you're doing a quick release or whether you're doing a natural release, you do not wanna try and open the Instant Pot without that pin dropping in. We're gonna do a quick release and you'll see at the end, uh, the pin's dropped in, it's ready to open. When I do a quick release, I like to put a rag over this thing so, uh, steam doesn't shoot up and hit the ceiling. I know it sounds stupid, but that's always what I'm worried about. So I'm gonna do that. 
and I'm gonna let this steam out. We'll just wait for that to finish its thing here. Man, it smells really good. I can't wait to eat this. Whew. Right there, do you see how it just dropped in right there and it's no longer level with the uh, top of the pot? That pin is dropped in. There is no more pressure uh, left in this Instapot. So now I can safely open it up and I'm not gonna have an explosion. So let's do that. All right, there we go. All right, you can see here, it's kind of all cooked. Uh, I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. See the bananas now where it's just kind of falling apart and it's all just becoming combined. All right, that's perfect right there. Next, I'm gonna start adding the rest of my ingredients to make this a meal. All right, first thing in is a cup of frozen blueberries. Since these blueberries are frozen, um, they'll, that hot buckwheat will just kind of get them all going and they'll be ready to eat. After that, I'm putting in one tablespoon of raw cacao nibs. I'm just gonna pop those in here. That'll give it a little chocolatey flavor, which I like. Next, I've got a tablespoon of hemp hearts. These are just the ones from Costco, uh, the, the big bag, and I'm gonna toss those right in here. You may know this, but hemp hearts are full of omega-3s. Um, what I didn't know was, people are like, oh, fish gives you omega-3s, fish have omega-3s. Did you know fish don't make omega-3s? Fish get omega-3s from the sea, from seaweed, from plants. Um, I didn't know that. I heard that on the Physicians uh, Committee for Responsible Medicine, PCRM, the exam room. They have a, a, a podcast or YouTube uh, show uh, every, I think they record on Wednesday and then they put it up on Thursday on the podcast. Um, I did not know that and that is like fuel for the next line. Someone's like, well, you need to eat fish to get omega-3s. No, you don't. Fish don't get, make omega-3s. They get it from uh, the seaweed. Just eat the seaweed, omit the fish, right? Get rid of the middleman. Next, I've got a tablespoon of chia seeds. So I'm gonna pop these right in here again from Costco. Next, I've got my spices. I've got a half a teaspoon of turmeric, a quarter of a teaspoon of black pepper, and a whole teaspoon of cinnamon. This is uh, saline cinnamon. I don't know what the difference is, but that's the one that we get. So I'm gonna pop that right in there. Then I've got a tablespoon of walnuts just chopped into small pieces. You can leave this out. Um, there are some fat in walnuts, but they're really good for you. It's a good fat and it's just a tablespoon. I'm gonna make four servings out of this. So I, I'm not too worried about it. It's a quarter of a tablespoon of walnuts. Uh, so whatever fat's in there is negated by the fiber that's in there. All right, so now I'm just gonna grab my spoon and start stirring. I'll give this a little mixy mixy here. All right, you can see it's all starting to come together now. The blueberries are turning everything purple and it's starting to get that, uh, that beautiful kind of finished a breakfast look and the turmeric there gives it a little kind of a, a orange tint but not much it's very slight all right it's looking good so <clears throat> i make four servings out of this i'm going to eat one for breakfast but i've also got some mason jars here i'm just going to fill these mason jars i'll fill three of them and then the fourth one which i would normally make four of these for a food prep on sunday night i'd make this put it into four mason jars and it's ready to go. So uh, I'm gonna eat one of them today, of course. So I'm gonna start filling these jars. I better do this over this thing here so uh, it doesn't wind up going all over the place. All right, so I'm gonna take my three mason jars here and get those over to the fridge. And then I'm gonna fish out the rest of this to give you my uh, breakfast for today. And since this is YouTube, and I have to have a thumbnail for this, I'm gonna show you what I did here. I added a little bit of extra uh, bananas on top. I added some more chopped walnuts on top. I sprinkled on some extra cinnamon, and I put a few more cacao nibs just to kind of make the picture look like it was on the top instead of mixed in. But the reality is you just mix it all in and you eat it together, and it doesn't need to look like a photograph. All right, let's take a bite of this. It smells so good, I can't wait to eat this. Let's give it a shot. Mm. One of my first vegan meals that I ever made um, for breakfast, and it's still one that I make uh, often today. Mmm. Mmm. So good. Mmm. The texture of buckwheat is completely different than having oats. Oats is very soft, it's kind of mushy. Even if you don't overcook it, it's still very, you know, it's very flexible. There's nothing firm about it. Um, buckwheat is not like that. When you eat buckwheat, it's definitely more firm. It has a, I wouldn't say a crunch, um, but it's definitely stiffer and it's a completely different texture. It's delicious. All right, our best Instapot buckwheat breakfast recipe. You gotta make this, it's absolutely delicious. It's one of my favorites. I'll see you at lunch.
All right, it's time for lunch, and I'm just gonna throw a bunch of stuff together that I have in the refrigerator. Since it's Friday, we're nearing the end of the week. Starting on Saturday, we start preparing for what we're gonna cook on Sunday for the week. And anything that's in the refrigerator left over has to get tossed because I don't keep food you know, more than five days. The first thing I'm gonna do is grab some potatoes. So I've got here um, some uh, regular yellow potatoes that are air fried and some sweet potatoes that are air fried. These are potatoes that we took all week long uh, for, for lunches. Uh, Tim likes sweet potatoes and then I like the white potatoes and sometimes we'll switch it up. And I'm just gonna toss those right into the, the bowl here. I'm gonna, the, the white potatoes are already, or the yellow potatoes are already kind of in pieces, but I'm just gonna piece up the sweet potatoes. Let's mix it in there. All right, that's good enough. All right. And then in addition to that, I've got some of my Instapot pinto beans. I'll put that recipe right here. And I'm just gonna pop those right in here right on top of this. I'll give that a little mix up here. So I've got quite a bit of starch right here. And then uh, I just took some spinach right here. I took this package of uh, Earth, Earthbound Farms, or whatever it is, organic baby spinach. And I took a bunch of it and put it uh, in some boiling water just to blanch it. Uh, and of course, it's now like just a little handful of spinach. So I'm gonna pop that in there too, but that was actually a lot of spinach at one point. And I've already microwaved all this stuff, so it's really hot right now, so I don't have to heat this bowl up. And then I've got my uh, cheesy sauce right here, and oof, it's hot. I heated it up in the microwave. I'm just gonna take a little bit of that and like pour it on top here. And I mean, you can use any cheesy sauce for this. Uh, this is actually my uh, cashew cheese sauce, but I'm not gonna use too much of it. That should be good. Um, one thing I wanted to mention before I talk about the avocado is this Earthbound Farms uh, baby spinach, I get Earthbound Farms all the time. One of the things they say on it right here, triple wash, non-GMO. So Tim's always like, you still have to wash it. I'm like, no, it's not, it's triple wash. You can just eat it right out of there, which you can. So when I threw the triple washed uh, baby spinach and it's organic, into the water and I let the, spin the water like boil so it would uh, wilt the spinach. <sighs> there was a baby curled up b d bug, little tiny it's bug. You can see it's curled up in its little legs. So even though these are triple washed, Tim is right. You do have to wash these before you eat them. All right, so I've got all that here and then I'm gonna take an avocado. And <sighs> so on starch solution, you can have an avocado. You just wanna minimize it because I mean it is all fat but it's you know it's good fat it's got uh, other stuff in it. it's really good for you but there's no way I can eat this whole avocado that's a lot of fat I'm just gonna take like a, an eighth of it so I've got my doll strong uh, 3.5 inch uh, paring knife it's a serrated edge paring knife and it's an absolute beauty doll strong was really nice enough to send this to me and uh, I absolutely love this knife I love all their knives like I love me my doll strong knives so I'm just gonna cut this right here right next to the bowl here. And then once I cut it, I'm just kind of twisting it, right? And then you can see here, ooh, and it's nice and ripe. It looks perfect. All right, so I'm gonna spoon some of this out of here so it's ready to go. Oh yeah, look at that. All right, all right, I'm just gonna kind of slice it up a little bit with my uh, paring knife here just to kind of get it chopped up so I can mix this whole thing up. Seriously, these doll strong knives have changed the way that I cook. I mean, I absolutely love cooking so much more now when you have a decent knife. And then the very last thing I'm gonna put on is some chives. I love me some chives, and anytime I use potatoes, I try and throw chives on. So I'm just gonna sprinkle some of that on top. Mm, just the rest of it is fine. And it looks like I'm gonna need to get more chives from Sprouts. I just go to the bulk spices area, and then I just bring my bottle and I fill it up right there. So, perfect. And you can see here I've got a beautiful bowl of starch and spinach and cheesy sauce and uh, chives. And I can't wait to dig into this. All right, it's time for lunch. I'm gonna mix this up a little bit so I'm not getting all the stuff on the top and then nothing on the bottom. Mmm, holy smoke. I don't normally put cheese sauce over sweet potatoes. I don't know why, I just don't do it. Um, but the sweet potatoes are in here because I wanted to use them up. It is really good. It's got a really nice sweet taste to it. Oh, so good. All that green stuff on top from the avocado and the spinach, absolutely delicious. Mmm, so good. Mmm. All right, what an amazing lunch. It's absolutely delicious. I'm gonna finish this and I don't want you to watch me because it's not gonna be pretty, but I'm gonna see you at dinner. All right, it's time for dinner. So the potato and uh, beans and the cheesy sauce and all that stuff, that really like hit me. 
Um, that was a huge meal. I had no idea how big that was. Um, I'm really not that hungry, so I'm a little snacky. Um, I'm gonna throw together a small uh, Buddha bowl type of thing, uh, and just with some stuff I have laying around, but I'm not gonna get too heavy with it, just because I don't know that I could eat that much food, and um, this is all stuff I've already had laying around. So I just wanna kinda satisfy my appetite and be done with it. I've got a, a bowl of peas here. I cook a bunch of peas in the beginning of the week, frozen peas, I just kinda steam them uh, so they're ready to go, and I'm just gonna dump that in there. Uh, and that's gonna be my starch for the, for the, for the bowl because peas are, are a starch on starch solution and I absolutely love them. So just to make it nice for YouTube and for thumbnail, I'm gonna put the peas on one side here. And then I'm gonna take uh, my broccoli. I've got some frozen broccoli here that's thawed um, and then cut up into little pieces. These are just little bags from Costco and they just take seven minutes to heat up. And I'm gonna throw them on the other side and it's a lot of green down there, but I mean, that's what I'm having. The broccoli is my non-starchy vegetable. So I'm just gonna dump that right in here, all right? So I've got peas on one side and broccoli on the other. That's kind of my starch and my non-starch. And then I do have some of this uh, air fried tofu. It's a uh, salt and pepper tofu. I have a video for that right here. It's really good. Um, it's just uh, some spices, some tofu, throw in the air fryer and that's it. Um, I'm gonna take this tofu and just kind of put some of that on. I'm not gonna use it all. That's a whole block of tofu. So I'm just gonna put like some right in the middle here, all right? And then I'm gonna take some of, some of Tim's uh, secret cilantro sauce. And he uses this uh, throughout the week on salads and all that. And I'm just gonna mix it up here and spoon it a little bit right onto this thing. Uh, let's see if I can get some of this on here. Uh, here, this stuff is really good. It's a kind of a knockoff of Cafe Rio's uh, cilantro sauce. All right, so that's that. And I'm gonna add a little bit more uh, of hemp hearts here. I feel like this goes really good on top of Buddha bowls. Even though I had a little bit earlier today, uh, I'm still gonna sprinkle some on here. And that's kind of it for my bowl here. All right, you can see here it's looking really good. The cream sauce on top of it, the, all the green in there, the tofu. This is a plate of healthy right here. There's a lot of green. So let's mix this up so I can get a nice little uh, sauce uh, mixture on top of all this. And let's give it a shot and see what it tastes like. These Buddha bowls, like you never know. It's got a lot of my favorite foods in it, but you know, I don't normally eat the, all these together. I'm just throwing together whatever's left in the fridge, right? I mean, I just wanna use up my food for the week. All right, let's see what we've got here. Mmm, so good. Wow, the tofu's delicious. One of the things that made me become a vegan from a vegetarian was watching guys like uh, Sim the Nutrition um, and, uh, and Miles, is it Healthy, Crazy Cool? I forget what his channel's name, the guy, uh, the ex-tennis guy in England. The two of them would have these beautiful Buddha bowls, right? And they would throw all sorts of stuff in there. And I thought, like, I would do that in the beginning. I would cook all this food to make these Buddha bowls. And I, you know, it just kind of got like, where I was making a lot of food for these bowls, I view Buddha bowls as a way to use up stuff that's laying around, and that's all I do with them. If I'm not gonna make something just for a Buddha bowl, just that's why the colors here aren't beautiful like you see on those guys. They've got purples and aren't, like I could have cooked up some carrots for this and all that, and I did have carrots all week long. If I had had any left, I would have thrown them in here, but the point of this is to not make anything new. So I definitely like Buddha bowls, but I don't wanna go out of my way to, to cook extra food for them. Although I do want them to be healthy. I mean, you never know when you're gonna wind up on a Gojimon video. I see a Goji, I know you're watching. All right, that's our video for today. Please hit that like button, show us some love. What's not to like, a full day of eating. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button, click that bell and you'll get notified every time we have a new video, usually every Monday. And please leave a comment below. Are you doing starch solution? Are you doing 50-50 plates? Are you doing 75-25 plates? All right, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>